been dubbed Pickering Park, but its real name is Kalmura. It lies about 10 kilometres west of Beach Ridge on Mangrove Mountain. The 85 hectare property is the home of former cartoonist Larry Pickering, his wife and youngest child, Little Larry. When we arrived, he just celebrated his fifth birthday. It's also the home for hundreds of racehorses, completing Larry Sr.'s lifelong wish to return to the country. I've been with horses all my life. People seem to think I'm a cartoonist, but I, I put my back out breaking horses in, and that's how I had to do cartoons. Um, there wasn't as much else I could do. Um, I had no education or anything, and I was just muckering with horses all my life. But Larry Pickering is not your average millionaire. <laughs> he often treats his business interests like a big game. Oh, I bet on anything. Yeah, I play the stock exchange a bit. It, uh, you know, I've got a few mates in that and, and uh, a few tips, just like racehorses. You, know, you get a few tips, have a bit of a punt. That's just like a giant TAB, isn't it? <laughs> Larry started his career with the Canberra Times and ended his drawing days with the Bulletin magazine. He's probably best known for his revealing cartoons of politicians and his annual Pickering Playmates calendars, which after 10 years are still big money spinners. 140,000 copies of the latest edition have already been sold. But it was back to the drawing board when it came to this new venture at Kalnura. It's been a 10-year dream for Larry to complete this haven for racehorses. And at last, he's starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Larry is a strong believer in giving his horses peaceful surroundings, and he spared no expense to find the winning formula. Rising fear is testament to that, Originally purchased for $7,000, the slender gelding has won nearly half a million dollars in prize money. That's not a bad return on your investment. Rising Fear is not only a feather in the famous Pickering cap, he's also Larry's sentimental favourite. Oh, I love him, you know. Yeah, oh, I love him, you know. good horse. He's, uh, he's, he's just, just such, such a nice, nice nature horse. horse. He's, he's, asked, he's done everything I've asked him to do, and he's never argued about it, and he's always been. Apart from the special swimming pool for horses, Kalnura features a specially built racetrack and it's in the process of having a fully operational surgery for horses installed complete with a resident vet and a pathology lab. It seems Kalnura is just what the doctor ordered for Larry Pickering. It was tiring of the pressure of producing those daily cartoons. Working out there in the front gate. Yeah, sorry, mate. What were you saying? <laughs> well, do I like drawing? No, I hate it. I hate drawing. I'd rather dig a hole and draw. And uh, I do it when I, whenever I go break. I, I've got to get my pencil out and start drawing again. So there's no urge to. Surrounded to do some by more? his wall of television screens no, no, in the living room, Larry can keep an eye on all race meetings around Australia, the TAB dividends, and his other interest, the share market. And although he's enjoyed his share of wealth, he says he awesome. shies away from the high life enjoyed by other entrepreneurs. I, I don't really go near the champagne bar I'm at, saddling the horses up. Um, no, that side of it doesn't appeal to me at all. But Larry still enjoys the trimmings, like his own personal helicopter, which he uses to get to city business meetings, the racetrack, or even for those more mundane chores like popping down to the local corner store for paper and some milk. And if this latest venture doesn't quite work out, at $5,000 a cartoon, Larry can soon draw himself out of the red if the need arises.
the industry claims Longwall mining is the safest and most efficient mining method. The mine machine carries its own strong hydraulic supports, which move forward as the shearing wheel cuts further into the face. But as the mine moves forward, the supports are removed behind it, and the mine roof collapses in its weight. That underground drop is then transmitted to the surface and appears as subsidence. One of the most visual impacts of longwall mining was on the shores of Lake Macquarie. In July last year, as a result of mining by Elcom's Newvale Colliery, this public park and jetty disappeared under the water. This house in 12 Rogers Street, Ralba, has noticeable cracks on the walls. BHP's Pacific Colliery, Long Wall No. 6, passes underneath the house. The drop on the surface of this property was measured by the Mine Subsidence Board at between 0.4 and 0.5 of a metre. The residents claim these fissures in the ground at Bushland at Wakefield have been caused by long wall mining from the new stand colliery. The land has opened up with huge cracks running down the hill, three to four metres deep at some points. The area is uninhabited and will settle in six to twelve months. But the residents argue that if such surface movements occurred under their homes, it would cause structural damage. Just before the state election, the Bolton Point Residents Group stormed the office of Merv Hunter, the member for Lake Macquarie, demanding he take a stand against the coal companies and their long wall mining proposals. Their public meetings and agitation won them a public inquiry into plans by BHP to mine along two panels near Burigal, long wall number nine and long wall number ten. The government must pay the In Sydney yesterday, the Premier Nick Greiner announced that up to $20 million could be spent rerouting the, the Sydney monorail, no an attempt by the new state leader to fix what was perceived as a mistake by the Unsworth the government. The so government does this mean that Swansea residents should be hopeful about a change of heart on the second low-level bridge now under construction? Leader of the opposition, Bob Carr, Carr on his today, tour of the Hunter region Carr. today, admitted that the former Labor government like had that. not listened yeah. to the Lake Macquarie yeah. electorate's yeah. protests yeah. over the bridge, yeah. an issue yeah. which saw a 26% swing against the sitting yeah. Labor member. I've got to accept that we lost that seat because of that issue. I'll be going down there talking to some of the community groups who were alienated from us over the Swansea Bridge issue and reassessing. That, that question. If we could turn back the clock, yes, obviously, a different approach was required for and we undervalued the wail of protest that was coming out of Swansea over the bridge issue. So is there money there for a high-level bridge at Swansea, which could cost up to $20 million? At a government right press now. conference in Sydney today, Transport Minister Bruce well, Baird gave little hope to Swansea email. residents that the new coalition government would halt production on the $4.8 million low-level bridge project. In terms of the peering that was carried out, uh, the construction work, uh, it would be difficult to change, but uh, let's wait until we hear the experts speak. A spokesman for the DMR said today that work on the current bridge was already half completed and, to his knowledge, would continue. To go completely is the present quota on imported vehicles, the theory being that their high prices will prevent any imports swamping our market. At the same time though, there will be a gradual reduction in import duty, just to keep the local makers honest. The government believes the measures could see a slight reduction in the price of cars, which are now very high compared to other similar countries, like Canada for instance. However, car makers are not so quick to forecast any price drops. The one exception is that Mercedes-Benz will now defer a 4.5% price rise.
Hundreds of hectares of vegetable crops have been ruined by all the water, and that means there'll be shortages at the markets. And shortages inevitably mean a hike in prices. But you still have to feel sorry for the I'd growers. Say nearly every cabbage Ray there, Mudd of East Maitland says he's lost all of his 80,000 cabbages and most of his cauliflowers, broccoli and potatoes. Say three or four but the days. rain has produced a bumper crop of mozzies. Hexham greys and all their relations are breeding in record numbers in stagnant pools, particularly on Kuragang Island. The council says it's monitoring the situation. Later, on the runway at Algiers Airport, a fresh round of negotiations was underway. A few moments ago, an official was allowed on board the plane, raising hopes for the release of more hostages. For the exchange could begin. I've, I've been with horses all my life. People seem to think I'm a cartoonist, but I, I put me back here breaking horses in, and that's how I had to do cartoons. Well, John, the inquiry before Mr Justice John Day got underway here at the Lake Macquarie Council Chambers sharp at 6.30pm. It appears to have generated a great deal of interest, as the Lake Macquarie Council Chambers were full to capacity, with people crowding and sitting on virtually every bit of floor space in the public gallery. Tonight it was BHP's opportunity to present its case as to why it believes long war mining should go ahead at the Young Walls End Seam at the northern end of Lake Macquarie. The hearing was told that if BHP was unable to use long war mining, the Pacific Colliery would be unviable and would have to close. BHP emphasised in the hearing the value of the colliery. It said it employed more than 300 people, provided business to retailers and wholesalers, contributed to government revenue and most importantly to export earnings. BHP also went to some lengths to allay fears about the effect of subsidence in the area. It said if any damage did occur it would be slight and negligible. Some of the residents group claim that BHP's idea of slight and negligible was different to their own. But BHP's geologist assured the hearing that their definitions were part of a world recognised damage classification. The hearing continues tomorrow.